The Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, an anglicized derivative of the word for wild man in the Native American language, had roots deeply embedded in the oral traditions and legends of various Native American tribes long before European settlers arrived. Tribes such as the Haida, Klinkit, which also means people of the tides, and the Sela have stories of large, hairy, humanoid beings that live in the forest and mountains, often described as guardians of nature. Some tribes believe Bigfoot to be a spiritual entity, while others considered it a flesh and blood creature. Bigfoot is known by different names, like Sumekwes among the Lumi, Shukum among the Chinook, Oma among the Shoshone, Sasquets among the Coast Sela people, Masau among the Hopi, and the Stone Giants or Gugwe among the Iroquois. These creatures were often described as part of the natural world, sometimes feared, sometimes respected. Early European explorers and settlers also reported encounters with similar strange ape-like creatures. For instance, in 1792, Spanish explorers led by Manuel Quimper reported seeing large footprints along the Straits of Juan de Fuca. Moreover, in the 1800s, sightings were recorded in the newspapers detailing encounters with large bipedal beasts in the forests. Many of these reports came from the Pacific Northwest, an area still known for Bigfoot sightings today. The lore only grew as more settlers moved westward, often encountering a vast, uncharted wilderness. One of the most famous early accounts comes from Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th President of the United States. In his 1893 book, The Wilderness Hunter, Roosevelt recounts a story told to him by a frontiersman named Bauman. According to the tale, Bauman and a friend were trapping in the Bitterroot Mountains when they encountered an aggressive bipedal creature that ultimately killed Bauman's companion. Roosevelt himself didn't directly encounter the creature, but the story left a strong impression on him. So, what is a Bigfoot? Well, it is commonly described as a large bipedal humanoid with thick, shaggy fur and is usually dark brown or black. Reports often mention a strong, musky odor and eyes that reflect red or yellow when light shines on them. Footprints attributed to Bigfoot typically measure between 15 to 24 inches in length. Estimates of its height range from 8 to 10 feet for males and 6 to 8 feet for females, and its weight is thought to be between 600 and 1,000 pounds for males and 400 to 700 pounds for females. So how did Bigfoot originate? One popular theory points that Bigfoot is a descendant of Gigantopithecus, a giant ape that lived in Asia over 100,000 years ago. Some believe that these creatures crossed the Bering Land Bridge into North America during the Pleistocene epoch. Gigantopithecus stood more than 10 feet tall and weighed 1,200 pounds. At most, gorillas only weigh 400 pounds. However, the Gigantopithecus hypothesis is generally considered to be entirely speculative. Gigantopithecus fossils are not found in the Americas. As the only recovered fossils are of mandibles and teeth, there is some uncertainty about Gigantopithecus's locomotion. Sasquatch proponent Grover Krantz has argued 
based on his extrapolation of the shape of the mandible, that Gigantopithecus could have been bipedal. However, the relevant part of the mandible is not present in any fossils. The current belief is that Gigantopithecus was quadrupedal, and it has been argued that Gigantopithecus's enormous mass would have made it difficult for it to adopt a bipedal gait. Another theory associates Bigfoot with a species of Paranthropus, such as Paranthropus robustus. With its crested skull and bipedal gait, it was suggested by primatologist John Napier and anthropologist Gordon Strassenberg as a possible candidate for Sasquatch's identity. Despite the fact that fossils of Paranthropus are found only in Africa, a third theory was suggested by Michael Rugg of the Bigfoot Discovery Museum, who presented a comparison between human, Gigantopithecus, and Meganthropus skulls. He favorably compares a modern tooth suspected of coming from a Sasquatch to Meganthropus fossil teeth noting the worn enamel on the occlusal surface. The Meganthropus fossils originated from Asia, but the tooth was found in the Pacific Northwest. A fourth theory suggests that Bigfoot may be a surviving relic of an ancient hominid, such as Neanderthal or Denisovans, that evolved in isolation. Notwithstanding these theories, skeptics argue that Bigfoot is merely a result of misidentifications, hoaxes, and mythological storytelling. Regarding temperament, is Bigfoot violent or docile? Well, reports on Bigfoot's temperament vary widely. Some accounts depict them as shy and reclusive, avoiding human contact whenever possible. Others describe aggressive behavior, including rock throwing, vocalizations, and even physical attacks. The variability in these accounts suggests that if Bigfoot exists, their behavior may be as varied as that of individual humans or bears. With respect to variations, there are reports of different types of Bigfoot. Firstly, what is considered classic. Many of those types emanate from the Pacific Northwest and describe the Bigfoot there as extremely robust, large, and strongly built with a facial structure similar to a human, but an upper head designed like a gorilla with a sagittal crest. Another type reported in Native American legends is the Gugwe, which are described as more aggressive and bear-like as compared to the more human-like Sasquatch. Some would classify this as a dogman, due to a more pronounced muzzle similar to a bulldog. Finally, there is the skunk ape, Sightings of this creature come primarily from the southeastern United States, particularly Florida. They are often smaller and emit a strong odor. Well, what about a Bigfoot strength? Given the size and muscular build often attributed to Bigfoot, it is plausible they are stronger than bears. However, there is no concrete evidence to suggest how they would fare in a direct confrontation. But if we were to speculate that its strength is proportional to a gorilla, then it would probably be twice as strong as our ape friend, meaning it would be much stronger than even a grizzly bear. That being said, their purported strength and agility would likely aid in survival against most threats. What about a Bigfoot's diet? Well, Bigfoot is thought to be omnivorous, 
eating a diet that includes berries, nuts, roots, fish, and small to medium-sized mammals. Some reports also suggest they may scavenge or hunt deer and other large animals. Does a Bigfoot migrate? Bigfoot sightings have been reported across North America from the Pacific Northwest to the swamps of the southeastern United States. They are typically associated with remote forested areas, suggesting a preference for dense wilderness. Whether they migrate seasonally is still a subject of speculation, although some researchers suggest they may follow food sources and favorable weather conditions. As far as how it gathers food, a Bigfoot is believed to be both a hunter and a forager. Their hunting methods would likely be similar to those of other large predators, relying on stealth, strength, and possibly ambush tactics to capture small to medium size and even large animals. Moreover, they use infrasound when hunting, which causes their prey to be confused. Supposedly, they whistle, which acts as their infrasound. Their foraging behavior, on the other hand, would involve searching for edible plants, fruits, and roots, much like other omnivorous mammals. In conclusion, the legend of Bigfoot is rich and varied, with roots that stretch deep into human history. While definitive proof of his existence remains elusive, the accounts and theories continue to captivate the imagination.